These are 10 features Gran Turismo 7 absolutely needs to add. The first one is there is no way in the online lobby system to search by full lobbies first or the most full lobbies first. So you come in and you're immediately greeted by lobbies with like one person in them. It's just not good enough. There needs to be a filter where you can search by the lobbies where it's all popping off. Secondly, there needs to be a way to change your car in the menus. I'll explain what I mean here. Let's say I just put this amazing KCR livery on my Toyota Supra and let's say I, want, I now want to put a livery on my Ferrari. I have to go through so many menus to get my Ferrari out and literally basically drive it back to the GT Auto and put livery on. It genuinely puts me off doing it. Like this is how many steps I would need to do. Do that, let the car go back all the way. You need to be able to change your car in the menus in GT7. Third, they need to add rain to every single circuit in the game. I can't believe they're not doing this. For example, if I go to Trial Mountain here and set up a custom race, let's say it's a seven lap race and I want to do some variable weather here, I can't select any rain at Trial Mountain because they just haven't enabled it for the track. There are so many circuits that don't have rain. For example, Daytona doesn't have rain. Watkins Glen doesn't have rain. Road Atlanta doesn't have rain. In fact, I don't even think it's possible for it to rain in the United States in Gran Turismo 7 or Interlagos. They absolutely need to fix that. Fourth, Gran Turismo need to add more missions to the game. They launched with these missions and some of them are kind of fun. You've got the classic cone challenges, you've got drift missions, eco challenges, the past. They were basically having loads of fun doing these missions. They added one series of missions, which was the human comedy, because people complained about there not being long races. They went, great, we'll add some really long races. Actually, these were the races where you could earn the most credits at the time. But they haven't done anything additional for about the last two years. They need to add missions and add really fun missions that we'd all enjoy in GT7. Fifth, Gran Turismo need to add a way for us to enjoy collecting cars. It's not good enough to give us this absolute Excel spreadsheet of cars with some red dots. It needs to reward us for completing a line of cars, completing a country of cars, completing cars from a certain manufacturer or getting like all of the Audi TTs or getting all of the 911s or something. It just doesn't reward you in any way. It should be a bit more like the FIFA games where if you connect all these dots, you get a bonus car or something. It's a complete missed opportunity. They need to incentivize us more to collect cars. Number six, Gran Turismo needs to stop taking the absolute mick with their prices in the used car dealership. If you look at a car like this, the Alfa Romeo 8C, that is 20 million credits to buy this car. I don't know how that's acceptable. If I want to buy that car here, it's going to cost me 10 of these. £160 is going to cost me to buy this car. That is 160 actual real world pounds or about 180 US dollars to buy this car that's not even a modern race car. It's literally about 100 years old. Gran Turismo is not acceptable. You need to lower down these prices. No one wants high prices in the Legend Car Dealership, especially as you can now just rent these cars online if you're racing them. So sort it out and make these cars more affordable. Number seven, Gran Turismo. I know you're gonna agree with this one. Needs to add more up-to-date race cars. If you have a look at these cars here, it's now got to the point, it's actually embarrassing how old a lot of these cars are. This 458 Italia GT3 is over a decade old. The McLaren's a decade old. You've got the Penzel and Supra that are basically ancient cars, shouldn't really be in this category. The Aston Martin is a decade old. The uh, GTRs are decade old. The Porsche is an old, old variant now. They're all really, really, really old cars. Either create amazing cars like the Peugeot RC Dead that's built an incredible platform, or give us the up-to-date IMSA WEC latest GT3 racing cars. It needs to be done. Number eight, Gran Turismo needs to add a proper career mode. The cafe menu system just doesn't cut it. It's a weird system anyway, because you can actually end up just buying a load of the cars to complete cafe menu books, which is no story. And then the actual story parts are hidden behind conversations that no one's ever going to click on. We need to have a story with actual characters, maybe have some racing drivers who are guiding us through, have some rivals that we're going to see in the races pop up and tell us about the cars as we're driving them. I feel like the cafe menu system is very artistic, but it's a complete waste basically of what an incredible career system could be by the way if you're enjoying this video make sure you subscribe 
And let's go on to number nine. Number nine, there needs to be a way for us to share the incredible scapes photos in Gran Turismo 7 directly to our social media platforms like Facebook or Twitter or YouTube posts or whatever. Sharing them in the game is great, but there is so much creativity here. I mean, look how incredible this photo is. It actually looks like a real photo of a GTR in this forest or wood or whatever, but there's no way for me to directly share it. If they can just add that feature, Gran Turismo 7 is going to be shared way more online. Number 10, Gran Turismo need to add more real world tracks to the game. Yes, we all love the OG Gran Turismo tracks like Trial Mountain, like Grand Valley Speedway, but there are just not enough real world tracks. When you look at this picture here, the real world tracks we have are only Laguna Seca, uh, Interlagos, Daytona, Road Atlanta and Watkins Glen in the US. It's just not good enough. We want to see more of the amazing tracks like Sabring, like Twin Ring, we want to see Snetterton, Alton Park, all these amazing classic tracks, even some of the ones in them in the UAE these days that feature a lot in the Formula One circuit. So please, please, please add those games. By the way, those tracks, if you want to see my ranking of all of the tracks in Gran Turismo 7, click this link here where I rank literally every single track. I will see you there.